The law of the excluded middle tells us that given any logical statement P, P is true or not P is true. It's important to note that the law of the excluded middle tells us that every logical statement has a truth value. It is true or false. It does not guarantee that you or I or anyone else actually knows what that truth value is. For example, consider the claim that it rained in Rome on the day when Julius Caesar was born. It either did or did not rain. But since scholars are not even certain of when Caesar was born, and of course, detailed weather data don't go back that far, we are unlikely ever to know which. Now consider Fermat's last theorem. Fermat thought it was true, but couldn't prove it. And no one was certain about its truth until 1994, when Andrew Wiles proved that it is true. But it was true all along, even though no one knew that for sure. As another example, consider an important problem in computer science. P and NP are classes of computational problems. P contains all the problems that can be solved by some deterministic algorithm, in other words, an algorithm that executes one step at a time, and we count the steps, where the number of required steps grows no faster than some polynomial function of the size of the problem. It's common in this context to say that such algorithms are efficient. NP contains all the problems that can be solved in polynomial time by some non-deterministic algorithm. In other words, one where branching is allowed, but we only count the steps on a single branch. If we assert that P equals NP, we're claiming that allowing non-determinism doesn't make a difference. In other words, that there are no additional problems that can be efficiently solved. If, on the other hand, we assert that P doesn't equal NP, then since, by definition, every problem in P is also in NP, it must be that there are problems in NP that are not in P. In other words, non-determinism does make a difference. As I'm talking, the question of whether the claim P equals NP is true or false is one of the most important open problems in computer science. No one knows whether P equals NP, but that doesn't contradict the law of the excluded middle. The statement has a truth value, even though no one yet happens to know what that value is. By the way, informed opinion is betting on the claim being false. However, it is the case that some sentences in English do appear to challenge the law of the excluded middle. But do they? For example, English lets us spout nonsense, like four and seven are friends, or history is purple. Are such claims true or false? Not clear in English, but this isn't an issue in the language of logic, where we must be clear about the domain of every predicate we use. Friends isn't defined on numbers, and purple isn't defined on abstractions, like history. Let's consider another example. The King of France has red hair. Is this claim true or false? Since there is no King of France, it doesn't seem true, but it doesn't seem false either since there's no king who contradicts the red hair claim. To look at this as a logical problem, let's do a very simple mapping of this sentence from English into logic. We could write redhead of King of France, but we're still stuck trying to assign a truth value since King of France doesn't exist. The problem is that this sentence carries the presupposition, unstated assumption, that there is a King of France. And that presupposition is false. When this happens, we often get sentences that appear to violate the law of the excluded middle. But before we jump to that conclusion, let's look more closely at someone who would utter this sentence is actually saying. Then we get something like this. There exists someone, column X, who is the King of France. And that someone has red hair. This second sentence does have a truth value. It's false. Another class of problem sentences uses words whose meaning is vague. Consider the sentence, the chili is hot. Is it true or false? Assume that we've already resolved an ambiguity. We know that hot means spicy rather than temperature hot. If the chili is here on the scale, the sentence is true. If it's here, the sentence is false. But what if it's here, or here, or here? The problem is that the English word hot is vague. Its meaning depends on context and opinion. And worse, 
it's natural not to think of it as creating a dichotomy. Rather, there are degrees of spiciness. So what does the law of the excluded middle say about this sentence? Again, remember that the law of the excluded middle applies to logical statements, not English ones. When we define logical predicates, we must do so precisely. So we could, for example, say that food is hot if it is above some fixed value on the Scoville scale. Or we could skip using a binary predicate like hot. Instead, we could assign a heat value to things. Or we could, and people have, define an extension to standard logic to handle degrees of truth. Fuzzy logic, for example, is such a system. By the way, while the vagueness problem comes up a lot when we try to map many ordinary English sentences into logic, it is less often a problem in domains where the use of formal logic is particularly important. It cannot happen in mathematics. Numbers are odd or not, which we call even. Numbers are prime or not. Matrices are either singular or not, and so forth. The foundation of mathematics is precise definitions. And when we automate reasoning, for example, using many kinds of databases, the problem is also defined away. For many reasons, including legal and financial ones, database predicates must have precise definitions. Someone is or is not an employee. An employee is or is not eligible for benefits, and so forth. The key to understanding why sentences such as these don't make fools of us for assuming the law of the excluded middle is that the law of the excluded middle says that every logical statement is true or false. It doesn't say that every English sentence is. The problem of mapping from English or any other natural language into logic is complex. It keeps linguists and philosophers in business.